You get you you EFAP fans. Have you have you been noticing lately? You've been getting all of the stuff. All that all that Ahsoka content. juice yeah. came right out. Oh, yeah, fucking oh. Ahsoka, bro. Bro, Ahsoka, <laughs> it's actually a, a super annoying to me. So I, I, I watched uh, the Clone Wars when I was like a kid, and like the Clone Wars isn't very well written, but man, uh, you know, Ahsoka used to be an actual character. He actually had like a personality, and in this one, she's just like just a fucking bank of wood. She doesn't do anything. She used to be like sometimes she smirks, so much and more sometimes energetic. She crosses her arms. The smirking and crossing the arms is like it's like a, a shadow of what what she was. I don't know why Dave Filoni just made her like this obnoxious monk. It was crazy as well because know, it is kind of weird. That was getting um, shared excessively. The fact that she folded her arms and I was just like, man, I guess that really does work. Like it'll make you fill in the blanks, I guess. Which uh, that quote about Kitsch had that near the end that it's like it'll it'll have people believe what they're seeing is a hell of a lot deeper than it actually is. There's so little to draw out of it. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I was tweeting about it because I saw Disbrew tweeting about it that. IGN did a review semi-recently in summary of uh, Ahsoka saying it is a season filled with basically nothing but uh, extended scenes of like pauses that are, that add nothing or jangling oh. keys to sort of keep you going. It's just like, oh my God, it's been a while. Even but, IGN. Uh, yeah, even IGN. I guess IGN. the Disney the check didn't clear. It, it does feel weird to see like big publications repeating talking points that we've been like running with for years. Like, holy shit, they're catching up. I never thought they would, to be honest with you. Um, the And I say, they're talking points that, like, uh, around all of our spheres for a long time. We've definitely been pushing the Jangly Keys thing since at least Mando Season 2 finale. But I want to say earlier than that, because it was all of Mando Season 2 in general, right? Like, that was the key jangling season. They had, obviously, yeah. Bo-Katan, Boba Fett, Luke. Luke. <laughs> yeah, Luke would be a big one. Ahsoka was a key jangle in that season. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? It's like, oh, I love to see her. There she is. Oh, man, she had her own show. And then it's just nothing. I don't get it, because she used to actually be, like... Like, like clever too, and like in like curious about things. I, I I'm I'm going off my memory. I, I I watched it. I watched the entire show for a video I made on my channel. With this, she's just completely nothing. I don't understand how anyone is really happy with this. Even the Clone Wars fans. I was actually going to suggest since uh, we are only we are only an hour and 44 minutes in. Uh, would mm -hmm. you guys want to check out that IGN review? It's in video form. Oh, oh yeah, let's give it a look. Really? Holy well, shit. I'm curious, yeah. Because normally cold, uh... IGN just, you know, passes out the sevens and above for all the corporate sponsors. Yeah, because um, the video is called The Ahsoka Season Finale Reminds Us What's Wrong with Star Wars. One other thing I want to mention is that I think Dave Filoni has always had this problem with making the bad guys stupid and incompetent. <laughs> As, <laughs> you could say that about his heroes as well. <laughs> and is here about making everybody an idiot, but especially the villains. Well, one thing um, I like saw, the... uh, just yeah, really yeah. quick, one thing I saw about a video assessing Ahsoka versus the Clone Wars versus like Rebels and stuff is that a lot of people are not as aware as they should be of just how much Filoni did uh, in terms of his writing versus show running, and that we should be careful to assume that almost all the best writing decisions in Clone Wars and Rebels, whatever they may be, uh, that they get given to him, like credited to him. Uh, meanwhile, uh. of course, uh, Ahsoka, we know, written and in some cases directed by him, like this was his baby sort of thing, and that this should be probably the best representation, especially being it's brand new, of his abilities as an artist. And I was like, that's probably true. Uh, current abilities, I, certainly. I did not know that. Uh, I, 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 had, I had no clue. I thought Filoni was heavily involved in Clone Wars, but then yeah. I saw someone lay it out, and I was like, oh shit, is writing credits for them. I think it's only like the newest season or something? It was, it was the lighter that it went on, the more credits he got. Like, the lighter, the longer that the show went on. And I don't, wanna, I don't want to undermine his contributions. For all I know, he's responsible for some of the like best payoffs in the show, as far as I'm aware. Like I said, I haven't seen it and I haven't checked all the credits, but I remember just watching a video that was like, be careful to credit a lot of different things to him, because uh, you need to check who actually did the stuff, because a lot of people don't get credited where they should. I mean, it just, I don't know, it just seems like Ahsoka, like the bad parts of Ahsoka are like a spiritual successor to the bad parts of Clone Wars, because in Clone Wars, you you frequently have these scenes where, like, uh, Jedi would be facing, like, 80 battle droids, and the battle droids would just run up shooting their lasers, and, the and like, Anakin or something would just mow them all down. I'm like, 
right? That was exciting. Yeah, this is just weird. Spoiler alert! All right, All right everybody in All chat, right. oh, if you oh, were looking, to be spoiled. I know you've been watching Ahsoka. You haven't finished it yet. You got to get out of here now. You're about to have it spoiled. Oh God, the spo this is when you have a friend who hasn't seen Ahsoka, and they're like, "Please, please, don't spoil it." You're like, "Oh God," because yeah, oof, you'd miss. Oh, just At imagine least two things that happen. I don't even. What would be the genuine spoilers? Okay. Anakin shows spoil up. Both things that happen. There's a spoilers ghost. For the finale yes. of Ahsoka, or the whole season? Do you mean? Just the whole. Well, at that point, you could argue it's the whole season. But yes, uh, what would be the whole seasons? What What are the th um, if you wanted to spoil Ahsoka as a show to someone but who hasn't seen it? How would you do it? And how, uh, how, could you, how the be, fastest way possible? To use the force. That'd probably be the big spoiler, right? Thrawn is back in the Star Wars universe. Oh, yeah, Sabine Thrawn can use the back. Force. Anakin shows yeah. up as a Force ghost. That's probably it. That's right. That's those are the main ones. Um, <clears throat> maybe, maybe our oh, Ezra. He's he got saved. You know. So funny because like it starts to get a little like, dude. Do, do I even bother mentioning this? Is like, yeah, Soka's not in the regular galaxy now. But as you highlighted when we watched this, it, like that will ultimately be highly beneficial for her by the time we. I like how if you said that to someone, she's not in the regular galaxy now. They'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah. Well, and it's just and it's, it's weird as a talking point. You're like, okay, and what does that mean? Dude, what what are, the the thing that I find interesting is if the show doesn't get a second season, which let's be real, that's entirely possible. Like the viewership was not amazing. Yeah, um, and that show was probably pretty expensive. If they don't do a second season of Ahsoka, then that means that all of the plot points that I imagine that they're setting up there may go unresolved, and Ooh. I don't know, that seems like that might be a good thing, given that they're delving into, like, all the Mortis stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you know what, maybe we... I... We, we've talked about this before, chat might remember, that conversations about the idea of accepting certain aspects of Star Wars as canon or not, for me, Ahsoka's, like, a really easy one to essentially, like... Let, let's put it this way. When I'm watching Empire and, and Lucas fighting Darth Vader, there is no part of my mind that's thinking, yeah, and also there's Ahsoka who will at some point in this world um, go to an interdimensional plane that connects, like, timelines and then go to another galaxy by riding in the mouth of a star whale to go fight, like, a bunch of Night Sisters and zombie stormtroopers. That, that's just not... There's no, there's I don't, no world um... where that's like in my mind is a thing that actually occurred in this universe. Oh no, hell no. No, 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 no. Dude, there, I'm, yeah. I'm so worried that our wars, if it keeps going like this, we'll start doing multiverse shit. I think mean, we've yeah, heard man, that's if, the rumor what that's Anakin... plan with that stupid will between world shit. Oh, I mean, that really? might be the vehicle to get Anakin, especially if Hayden Christensen's like, yeah, I mean, you know, I could work. Like, I could. But if Anakin didn't work. become Darth Vader, ooh. And then they bring him oh, in so no. that he can actually be part of the story more long term, possibly. I mean, the thing that I, <laughs> the fact that the fact that the grand plan for Thrawn is to create an army of zombie stormtroopers, like that's great. Um, when I think about that, I kind of wonder. It's like. Do they know what they're doing? You know, do they actually, is this meant to be like an allegory of some kind for like the shambling corpse that is Star Wars? You know, just getting brought Mind back from the dead. But then again, it's like, it might just be that Dave was like, nah, man, like zombie stormtroopers is cool. Like that there is no commentary at all. That's where the, the thought like, begins no, and terminates. Yeah, was there was no commentary are cool. on the side of Star Wars that, like, this is the only way that it can be imagined to continue is by just, re re like, reviving the dead and then <laughs> having them shamble around, you know? But no, I think it's just they want zombie stormtroopers. I, dude, he really I reminds that. me of Zack Snyder. Um, um, you know what? what? The way that I've described it is, like, if you imagine, like, Dave Filoni is, like, a... He's like a 12, 13 year old ideas of storytelling. And Zack Snyder is more like a 15 or 16 year old. That's kind of the way that I imagine it. Snyder's a bit more edgy. He thinks he's a bit more profound in terms of like the, the kinds of stories he's telling. Whereas to me, Dave definitely feels like throwing his toys at each other. You know, these are my toys and Ahsoka's my OC. And then they, you know, they fight each other and they have their lightsaber battles and then the ships fly around and blow each other up, you know? That's how I, that's kind of... Yeah, because would... Snyder will, like, rip out Superman's heart and show it to the screen and be like, look at this. Meanwhile, yeah, Filoni is, will be like, like you know, lost, protecting you know? all of his children all the time. Yeah. And be like, they yeah. made it in the end. Oh, look, that was scary. Ooh, that could have been bad. Here they go. Off they are. Mm -hmm. Yay, we did it. That sort of stuff. So, there are similarities, but 
I yeah, I <laughs> I'd give Snyder more credit than I'd give Filoni, let's put it that way. Oh god, I think I might agree, which is really awkward, isn't it? But it's like... Uh, it is mm. awkward, but I just, especially, it might just be because Ahsoka's fresh in my mind and I had to spend a lot of time It could be that, that, yeah. And I really do hate that show. Um, I, I could see us, like when we finish up Filoni being like, yeah, okay, Snyder's bad, but at least Snyder actually tries to do a thing and um, fails at it. Know, and then, But I if like we finished Snyder. up watching Filoni... Uh, sorry, Snyder recently, we might have said, yeah, Filoni's bad, but at least, like, he's, you know, inoffensive. Meanwhile, Snyder will do things um, that are fucking crazy and insane. Yeah, I guess it's... I, I guess the thing... I do like 300, you know? <laughs> when was the last time you watched it, Fringy? We, didn't we rewatch it, like... Didn't we watch it for, like, an EFAP movies? Where the, the takeaway was that it was, like, pretty flawed? But I still like that movie. Well, so, you know what's crazy is... I'm pretty sure we did, but you weren't there. I I'm not sure what it was. I definitely <laughs> recently like rewatched 300. I say recently in the last couple of years, and I'm confident my takeaway was like, yeah, it's pretty flawed, but like, yeah, so I do like it. Um, well, the that is the first EFAP movies of the War Arc, so you guys are going to be able to see that in January, but um, <laughs> at this point, uh, I rags. I feel like you may feel the same way. I can't quite remember anything we said <laughs> like anymore. I, it's been I a while. Think, I think I don't hate it. I don't think. I don't um, think I hate it either. I, but I hate I, it. I thought I thought it had some neat little things in there, mm. but it wasn't good. Also, I no. The point I'm making wait, just to clarify, what? you're not getting the whole walk in January. It's going to be across the year, one per month, or maybe two. That's the that's the plan. I've talked about this like even two years ago. Okay, this, we're finally launching. That's actually why, by the way, that uh, things are stretched thin is because I'm putting everything in place to complete the war arc ready for uh, January. It's not finished yet, still. But hey, it's gonna be fun. Get excited. Also, Fringy, carry on. <laughs> what were we say? Oh damn! Well, because well, we're trying to figure out. It's like if if we can if we can say that Dave Filoni and Snyder are comparable in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Who do we think? Who, who do you think if, if you if it's like you had to be forced to let's put it this way they're, they're working on something new now and it's whatever they want to make like they're full carte blanche they can make whatever they want not attached to any specific franchise uh, uh, but maybe it is it's exactly what they want to make and they have all of the resources to fully realize that story which one would you rather watch the Snyder one or the Filoni one so it, you could just say like do you want to see Rebel Moon or do you want to see let's just say whatever sci-fi project that's movie. well not not removed from Star Wars a Filoni work oh, that's sure. entirely what he wants sure. which funnily enough if he got entirely what he wanted it probably would be a Star Wars movie that's probably what he wants yeah um, that's probably in, my mind. in any case yeah. uh yes I would rather see the Snyder With film just Snyder? because of the fact that I don't know what I'm gonna get this could be crazy mm -hmm. and it also could there have some might... stuff in there I like yeah there yeah. could be some neat shots there's there that could too. be some interesting. Uh, I, do consider, I certainly consider yeah. Snyder to have a better eye than Dave Filoni. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's got a better. Well, I, I don't want to be pretentious. And dull and boring. But dare I say watch. Snyder's more of an artist than Filoni is? Uh, I, yes, I, he I, is. I would, I would absolutely say that. Yeah, okay, definitely. Yeah, good. I didn't think Snyder I was crazy is, for a second. There. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Snyder no, shitty, but he is he's, an artist. He's cringe. That's that's his thing. It's not. He is cringe. I believe that he does have a passion for storytelling. I just think that it's cringe. <laughs> like fifteen-year-old cringe is way less cringe than thirteen-year-old cringe. <laughs> Fair and agreed. 